DJ, tell me your name and your title. My name is EJ McCoy. I'm the CEO of... <laughs> oh, no. Uh, no, 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 no. I can do it. My name is EJ McCoy. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Scoop Soldiers in Chorby. Josh. My name's Josh Cahill, and I'm a former pet waste millionaire. I'm just kidding. No. I'm Josh Cahill, uh, co-founder of Scoop Soldiers. Uh, how'd y'all meet? I don't know. I could take this. Oh, I'll take we'll it. We'll let Blabberjaw do it. I will take it. We met through a church internship. So I was 21. I was looking for more than just making money and looking to, uh, trying to actually figure out myself and my life. And part of my journey in that and my spiritual journey was uh, joining an internship uh, at a church that I was going to. I felt led to do it. I met Josh and it was a 10 month program. So I met Josh, we got really close in those first two months, and then I didn't make it. My, my problems with authority got, got the best of me, and I was out of the 10-month program. I made it two months, and I was gone. But from there, we met, or I mean, we, we, we'd stay in, in touch, and every time we were on the phone or we were talking, we would, be, it, it was just, we would be able to really banter and talk and have a serious conversation, but then banter. It was a unique, a unique relationship, and so... Five years after that, we got into business with each other. Nice. What was your, what's your take on when you guys first met? Well, I mean, he's mostly right. I mean, you can tell the funny stories if you want about me sneaking yeah, out the window yeah, or whatever. Know, we, 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 we got <laughs> close because we both had a little, uh, a, a little bit of a problem with authority. But, yeah, when EJ and I were in the same room... Sharing the same, were we sharing the same room? Yeah, we were, we were like roommates. So we were in an internship that was like 24 hours a day, six days a week. You had one day off. And other than that, the church you, were, you had volunteered to do this with was educating you, you know, to sending you to Bible school, but also putting you to, to work for free. Free labor. Free labor. <laughs> now, they had to pay for our food and our housing, so we weren't exactly free. But yeah, in a lot of ways, free labor. Yep. Uh, unpaid internships that was... Uh, not just Monday through Friday, nine to five. Well, and you wouldn't believe some of the stuff we had to do. I, one of the funniest moments that I remember is when they taught us how to hip hop dance. EJ, oh, would you geez. show us some moves, please? <laughs> would you? <laughs> would no. you? So, so this was a charismatic church, very charismatic, very diverse church. And yeah, they wanted us. They they wanted us to hip hop, like straight up hip hop dancing. Yeah. Like no lie. My hips don't move that way. I was never taught. I don't. I, I don't know. I don't understand. His hips don't lie. He's white. <laughs> <laughs> but he wasn't any better. Either. No, he I wasn't. wasn't any better. And I, and it, but we had but to, we had to do point, public speaking. Yeah, we had to do public speaking. We had to work with children. We had to work with youth. We had, so it really stretched us in a lot of ways. There were a <laughs> I lot, of, un, very a good lot of uncomfortable moments. We also had to act mm. and do like yeah. So it was uh, it was quite interesting, but. As EJ said, you know, I actually fulfilled my obligation. And then you the worked for the church yeah. and ministry as and a children's director, believe it or not. I mean, this guy, <laughs> I don't even, I mean, I bet I'm you now. a kid. What do you mean? Well, that's true. Yeah. That's but, a, uh, yeah, and I'll second what EJ said. We, I'm, I'm, I was terrible at that point in my life, and I still kind of am. I'm keeping <laughs> relationships and, like, phone calls. So I talked to EJ every few months, six months, eight months. If that. We had a Valentine's Day uh, together. Yeah, that was, I think. 2008. Yeah. And um, we had a mutual friend whose spouse was friends with a girl he was friends with, friends with dash talking to, I don't know, whatever they were, friends. They were friends. <laughs> so, friends. And, and, and she was also friends with the girl I was dating. And so we, we weren't together at the time. And so she, she told us we were meant for each other. Yeah. And that was, I so guess, we that had, was prophetic. We had, our, we that had a, a Valentine's date. Yeah. Uh, that was 2008, but we didn't get into business together until uh, 2000, late 2010. Yep. What, what was that? Like, what was that bit like? The call, like the, your, what, uh, when you both decided, I actually hey, vaguely you remember. This? I was driving on Custer Road, driving up to Plum Lane, where our our headquarters still is in McKinney, and I was looking for. I had no office. I, I had two or three landscaping trucks, Emerald Lawn and Landscaping at the time, which is today Chorby, and. Uh, I had no office staff, and actually, speaking of, there, there, was, uh, there was this girl that I knew that actually worked for this church, one of Josh's really good friends, 
Uh, but but she, she, I had her in my mind. Like this, she was this girl that could literally. She was like a like a superhero. Yeah. She could do anything and everything. She could go and pick you up milk at one a.m. in the morning. She could also do your entire job, whatever it was. Like no matter how detailed. It, she was just like, I was looking for that. I couldn't afford her. <laughs> so I ended up with this guy. But, but no, but in it, all seriousness. It was supposed to be a sales position. It was going to be a sales position. I, I was, it, my point a second, I was trying to figure out what was the next role I was going to hire to help me build the business outside of the people that were going and doing the work. And that wasn't, didn't happen. And so the position I decided on was, okay, I want to I work with Josh and help me do sales because his background was sales. So help me build this business through sales. Yep. And uh, the coolest thing is when I came in, being like really the first full-time employee. That wasn't doing work. That wasn't yes. just like doing like the out physical in the field. work. And this is all Emerald we didn't Monster. Have, we didn't have a lot of structure, but the coolest part about the position was EJ like literally just opened up everything. Like he was like, I mean like, Every there, part of the business. There wasn't any the, part. That you were the you were a part. He was like a partner, whether even though he wasn't. But yeah, and it was. Time. So, uh, long story short, I quickly realized that I wasn't that good in the sales. <laughs> yeah, that that that, we that changed like real quick. It he, his, real his quick. job was at, at Emerald Lawn and Landscaping. His first job was to go and help me grow commercial sales. And that ended and changed really quick. I should also mention that at the same time, so the part of the call, going back yeah. to your question, Brent, the call was like, hey, I'm looking, I, I want to start this poop scooping business. Uh, so I want to partner in that. But I said, but in the meantime, come and help me build this commercial sales side of my mowing business. So let's be partners over here. That's, that's our night job, our side gig. Let's, uh, let's, let's do this during the day together. Yep. And yeah, from day one, regardless of what is what he was supposed to do, because yeah, you sucked at commercial sales. <laughs> commercial land. Listen, if I but, hear no more than once, then my yeah, day's done. I have yeah. to check out and yeah, go he, home. He, he, does, he doesn't like. He doesn't. So we both are. Uh, as Cynthia calls it endorphin. We're, we're, we're endorphin yeah. addicts. Case in point, we're endorphin <laughs> addicts. And so we liked that quick sale of a lawn mowing. Like we could sell 25, 50, you know, eventually 100 mowing customers in a day or in a week or whatever. Like you got that that rush, mm -hmm. you know. Then we learned years later, not to get sidetracked, <laughs> we learned years later that we are not very good at the cold calling kind of no. bootstrapping kind of sales. Nope, and, <laughs> and um, you know, any kind of long sales process is just not fun. So, but we... Uh, but that was the So call. at that time, the lawn care company was doing about 400 grand yep. in revenues. Um, I... And at that point, that's when I moved in and squatted at EJ's No, you didn't office. squat at first. <laughs> so we had this house. So I, got, I had been married a year. We had this house um, that is still our headquarters for Chorby, for White Picket, not for Scoop Soldiers. Scoop Soldiers has a new headquarters. But it's, it's a lot of Chorby and uh, White Picket and Executive Lawn Care, another brand. It's all at this mm. same house. So I'd bought this house and gotten married and lived there for a year. But then her and I bought our own house and moved. And the idea was it was on an acre and it was inside of Frisco McKinney or real close to it. So we were going to develop the back of it for our shop. I was going to office there, three bedroom house. I was going to, I started out just taking one office and he paid half the mortgage for the rest of the house. But over time, he stopped paying any <laughs> rent. But at the same time, so I always told him well, he, I, he wouldn't pay. Yeah, and so, so, but at the no. same time, he ended up going from where he was, he was giving up one room for my office to he was in one room and the rest of the house Everything was Everything else. And people were coming every morning at oh, 8 yeah. in the morning. Yeah, he had no. So that's when he stopped paying rent. But let's just say he stayed there as long as he possibly I could. I, mean, I think he, I lived there I, for four years. For, the t for a while, yeah, uh, longer. For a while, <laughs> longer. I actually, seriously, I remember for a while it was such a part of our life. I didn't think it was ever going to change. I thought you were going to probably live there forever. I was thinking about moving back there, but Victor took my Victor spot. Victor took your spot, yeah. yeah. When, when did you get your first poop scooping spot? Okay. February 2011. So this is all in that same timeline, February 2011. This is just months. That it, it, was six, it was four months earlier that we came up with a name. We decided we were going to partner in business. He was going to come to work. Gives notice for his current job at the church. In February 2011, February 7th was his first day. And then I think within a week we got our first two customers. 
and they were Emerald client, Emerald Lawn Care clients, I think. Angela, I remember was. Angela. And, and she was right close to Plum Lane, uh -huh. where, where our office was. So he and I went over and, and went to do it ourselves. We we're so excited. What did you use? We had a five-gallon bucket and mechanics gloves. <laughs> well, we were really smart, you know. Rather than rather than looking at what you know the other companies were using, you know, they weren't smart enough, even though they had been in the business a long time. So instead of just using, you know, pretty standard tools for the industry, we said, no, we're gonna do better than our competition, and the best yeah, way is to use your hand, baby. Bend so, down, pick that up, or you can get every little turd. As you can see, no. he really enjoyed that. <laughs> so yes, we had five gallon buckets and mechanics with mechanics gloves. gloves. And needless to say, within about three minutes, we we're knew like, that this was the is right not way. the way. But at the same time, at the same time, you'd have thought we were going to get can to pick candy oh yeah up. i mean we, we were we were, we were so optimistic excited. we were excited he was really good at that yeah uh, you know was i'm kidding <laughs> no he was we really so good at excited. that uh but yeah we had that house i remember that first house i actually and i think that was the about the house. last time that ej scooped the yard <laughs> <laughs> no you know thanks to your leadership i had to scoop in houston a few times yeah, and yeah. <laughs> that leads me to the next question who is scoop Oh, there's no question. There is absolutely no there question. There's no question. That I have scooped. At this point, <laughs> I have scooped far more poop. Oh, give me a house. break. No question no. whatsoever. I, I definitely have scooped thousands more lawns than Mr. McCoy. Thousands and thousands more. But you notice he's it's it's not he's very vague. Thousands more. It's, it's thousands, thousands and thousands. More. Okay, sure. No, sure. so I was the I, I was our uh, original scooper. Yeah, oh yeah, for sure. Oh yeah. Yeah, he was our original scooper. Then I mastered. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm actually I'm totally full of crap right now. No, and so during no. that time though, we were both really hybrid. We were both working with with the lawn care company and no, also. No, I wasn't Scoop doing soldiers. anything with Scoop Soldiers. He's right. <laughs> I did, we always joked that I, I didn't care about Scoop Soldiers till it was doing a million dollars a year in revenue. And then I started actually caring about it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And true. I didn't That's and, pretty and I am just to be very clear, I, I have scooped maybe, if I'm giving myself a lot of credit, hundreds. <laughs> Say a hundred. Yeah, yeah. I, no, I've, hundreds. You, probably a couple hundred. I don't know that I've scooped 200 yards. So at, at what point from that moment, or I guess from what point did you guys feel like you could scale it more? Oh, we always believed that we could scale this business. No, I don't think so. You don't think so? No, think about it. Oh, yeah, we, we were making tens of dollars for about by our two current, years. <laughs> by, our, by, our, by today's standard, which I don't even think scratches the surface of the potential, by today's standard, we did not. As ambitious as we both are and were, we didn't. Here's how I know that. I remember, I remember when we started the referral program. Mm -hmm. No. Groupon. It was Groupon. Oh. You remember Groupon? Oh. Okay. So we probably had 50 to 100 clients, maybe 200 clients, and we used Groupon. Oh my gosh. And we thought, what we were all, because you have to give really good deals for Groupon, we thought we were going to get. We were giving a month free, I think. Yeah. And this happened both with Groupon and then a few later, years later, it happened with what we, yeah, we didn't learn our the lesson. referral Ugh. program is we'd come out with these things that we'd think we were gonna get. And I remember thinking, we had, we had around 100 clients, not even. And I remember, uh, I personally remember, as ambitious as we are thinking, that a couple hundred clients or 500 clients would just be insane. And this is, in, this is probably two or three years in because we didn't grow very fast. Like mm -hmm. Josh just said, it was like, we were doing tens of dollars <laughs> a week for like two years where it was like, I remember my wife was like, why do you even still yeah. have that? Why do you even still do that? My dad was doing the same, focus on the lawn care business. Yeah. And, and so, yeah, we did not always see the idea that you can have tens of thousands of clients, even as ambitious. It's, and that's why I think now, and I try to think, okay, what am I missing now in my mindset? Because I didn't think that, I didn't think that we could even get to 5,000, let alone 15 or 20 or whatever. Well, how many? Is it two hundred and fifty thousand? Is it a million? Yeah. What 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 can we? Uh, uh, there's sixty five million dogs in this country. So what what was the catalyst for you being like? We need to like we can make more money. We can get more clients. Like what was? Well, I just did such a great job operationally and made the best hires and 
it allowed us to scale. No, no. We, I, th- I think it was once, once the time was freed up and we made our first hire, then we started to think bigger because I no longer had to be in the, in the yards day to day. And so that freed up a lot of my time. And at that point, we could have just continued to work on density in Dallas-Fort Worth, but we decided well, that, to go another route. That was the where I was going to go was SEO. Oh, yeah. That was well, what, so everything Josh just said, absolutely. But the peace and the recognition that we were, you know, search engine optimization, we had discovered it very early on. We discovered mm-hmm. it because of Scoop Soldiers, because initially with Scoop Soldiers, going back to the 2010, 2011, we just thought we were going to do door hangers like lawn mowing, like slap it on the back of a lawn mowing door hanger, get clients. That wasn't working. No. We discovered search engine optimization very, like within the first 30 to 60 days of being in business together, we discovered search engine optimization. I was totally clueless to it. But then we realized that with pet waste removal, we kind of were, we had something figured out here that nobody else was tapping into in this industry. At, at, we were at the right place at the right time, so to speak, when it came to search engine optimization and the pet waste industry as a whole. And so we tapped into that, and then we were in, you know, we did that in Dallas Fort Worth or in Collin County, and then Dallas Fort Worth mm-hmm. uh, more broadly. We realized, I mean, literally, we were on That's the phone. That's when we started getting. We customers. realized if we can if we can get customers and get first page placement in, you know, that quickly in this market because we're at the right place at the right time. Can't do that today as easily. But we realized we could go to Austin and do the same thing. All we got to do is drive down there and just scoop. And, and then literally a month later, it was like, well, if we're driving to Austin from one house and then two and then three and then five, why not just hit up Houston on the way back? <laughs> yep. So in six months, Josh put 20,000 miles on a truck, an Emerald Lawn Care truck, by the way. Yes. So that's all I always like to make my contribution. Yeah, I always a, have to add it. Was it was an Emerald truck. It was my, <laughs> my company's truck. <laughs> <laughs> I always have to take some of the credit. No. no but we, I, honestly, that was one of the first new vehicles too, yeah, that, that we had ever bought. Yeah, that was at the same time we had just started. It was you know multiple years in before we started buying newer vehicles, mm-hmm. and that was one of them. It was a Ford F-150. And so I would get up at about 3 in the morning. I'd hop in that truck and be so excited to drive down to Austin, scoop five lawns, bounce over to Houston, scoop a few, and then do a round trip back to Dallas. And we just kept that going until I had to stay over in Austin because it was too late by the end of the day. And then he was I, at the top tier status of La Quinta. La Quinta, for the diamond time. member. Thank you. Still have my status. <laughs> Thank you, La Quinta. <laughs> But yeah, uh, and we just kept doing that. And of course, uh, during that time, everybody was saying, you know, you're, you're driving out there for that few of lawns. You know you're not making any money. Of course. I don't but know we that there was anybody, seeds. now that I think about it, I never really paid any attention, <laughs> but I don't think anybody like, believed in it. thought that we were making yeah. the right decision. Yeah. No, because they all were like, well, how much, how much more growth do you have, potential you, do you have And they were right in that regard. We, we were casting a very wide net. And uh, I remember the, the, one of the funniest stories to me is, you know, Josh's dad was somebody that we would constantly talk to and get a lot of advice from and take him very seriously. <laughs> and, but, but, but I remember Josh uh, being on the phone with him in the way, I think it was Atlanta when we decided to go into Atlanta. <laughs> you were like, oh yeah, by the way, go into Atlanta, I'll let you know, but. <laughs> yes, because he would always be like, what? Are you guys crazy? And so, yeah, I was like, hey, by the way, we're expanding to Atlanta. Talk to you later, bye. Because <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to hear that. But now it's a tradition now. Any, any of these ideas that we come up with that he may or may not agree with, he said, he, 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 even though he's like, go for it, he, he still plays that role of, oh, I don't know if you should do that. And he says, well, I do that because it's worked. Every time. He's like, everything I tell you guys not to do that you do, it works. So I'll just keep that tradition alive. So it's, it's funny. But yeah, so through that period of the business, with our expansion, we had our first employee here, Chase, who was rocking Dallas. I was developing the, the Austin and Houston markets. Uh, but that all came to an end. I was One dictating morning. orders. <laughs> yeah, right. He would call me. He'd be like, are you, where are you today? <laughs> I'd be like, I'm in Houston. He's like, when are you coming back? He didn't know what the hell was going on. Um, but Probably. yeah, it, it, it became, um, it became like Groundhog Day. And I realized it was time to hire one morning when I drove to Houston and went to look at my list on my app and realized that I was supposed to be in Austin. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot. 
Even though he's the one that made the list. I know, four. but I was just, you know, the back and forth, back and forth. It was just like a hamster wheel. And I was so tired that morning, and I just drove to the wrong city, which ruined my day. And I said, Mr. McCoy, can we hire somebody? And I said, I guess. I no, guess. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No. Yeah. So. So now, early years, you're making tens of dollars. Now. What is Scoop Soldiers pulling in in revenue? Over a million a month. Yeah. Well over a million well a month. Well over a million a month. And that yeah. took how many years? A decade. Of heart, like just you picking up dog? No. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no. No, no. no. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> to, do, to do a million dollars in revenue <laughs> picking up dog poop, you have to have over 10,000 clients. And so, no, it, t it took us a while. I would say we had our first million dollar year in 2016. Oh, uh, wow. Um, no, <laughs> not even close. I would say more like 18, 19, 20. Really? And no, you might be right. I'm sorry. I actually don't know. I know that we did it at Emerald Lawn Care, we did a million dollars in revenue first year 2012. I don't know Scoop Soldiers. Mm -hmm. So you may know, it may be. I 20. think it's 2016. So in our first five years in business, our fifth year in business, we did about a million in, at Scoop Soldiers, um, which would have been about, that would have been then about the, the 2016, I know, was the year that we went to Austin, Houston. No, that was 2015. That was 2015. Okay. And so 2016 would make sense. Yeah. Because we had, we had over 600 clients in Dallas. Yeah. And then we probably reached a thousand. Yeah. Yeah. Somewhere between 2016 and 18, we did a million dollars in annual revenue. Now we do about a million dollars, a little more, more than a million dollars a month. How many trucks does it take to do that every month? Well, you can, the easy numbers are about one truck for every hundred clients. If you're growing. If you're a, growing. a truck can do, you can, have, you can have one truck doing 200 homes. Yeah. 200 clients. But it would take, it. To do a million dollars in revenue a month or per year? Million per year? Million per year is probably 10 trucks. Yep. Am I saying that right? Yeah. Yeah. Million a year, 10 trucks. 100 to $150,000 a year per truck. How much does it cost to get to that point? Yeah. Oh, well, it didn't cost him anything. It's It'll blood, cost sweat, and tears for me. I mean, I had <laughs> poop on my shoes, poop on my legs. He was over there with white gloves on his little computer. That waste million, baby. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I'll say this: that's a timing thing. Yeah. What it cost us, we hit. We hit at the right time. Now that doesn't mean that you can't do it now. There's other ways you can do it now, but the way we hit SEO, as I was mentioning earlier, we hit SEO, and we also figured out we got into a, a groove where we kind of figured something out, and so it didn't cost us nearly in the early years to get to a million, to get to two million, to get to three million. I think it would cost us two, three, four, five times that today with, with what I know. But I know there's also people out there right now that, that are doing know. things that I don't know. Yep. Because there, there's a company in the Northwest that's gone out the last couple of years, and I think they've spent a lot of money. And so what does it cost right now to grow like that? From what I can tell, it costs between three and $700 for every customer you're going to get if you're going to grow really fast. We don't pay even close to that to gain a client day by day in our marketing strategies. It's, it's $120, $140. But we did not take money from the company early on. Three, four years. Yeah. We didn't and take so it. everything was reinvested. I remember when we were paying even just a few thousand dollars a month for SEO yeah. originally. That was, that, I mean, that was our, oh, I, that was all of the our way profit. I explain it is when we first started with SEO, it was 3000 and then worked its way up to 5000 a month pretty quick. And by today's standard, in my mind, from what I remember thinking $5,000 was back then when I was writing those checks and what I think of money, the way I would say by today's standard, we'd be spending 50 grand a month, which we're not even close, but it was, it might have been, it might as well have been 10 times that. We've had months where we've spent close to 30000 a month in marketing. No, now we have months there where we spend almost a hundred. Not just for scoop soldiers. Uh -huh. The last. Oh yeah, yeah. I gotta, I gotta get back. I gotta get. I gotta get back to work. Have you not heard me tell you this is we, the, oh, we, even, we actually God. named it after you. It's called the Josh the, Cahill the Josh way. Strategy. It's the Josh just Cahill turn way. It up. And keep in mind, in all seriousness, that's our that the that's yeah. that's all spent from our franchisees. Yeah. Like our our brand local fund still has 
hundred grand in. Yay. Well, it's all us because I'm doing the dollar for dollar thing. That's yeah. where it's all spent. But well, yeah, and I forgot. I mean, yeah, no, we spent eighty. We spent. Well, we won't do it every. We month. probably we probably spent. Yeah. And if you'd have shown up to the second day of the conference, you would know that that, that was in my keynote. We, we, our goal is to spend a million dollars in marketing. What if we could spend, I don't think we can afford it. We're not big enough yet. But what if we could put a million dollars a year into the pet waste industry? You're on your way. Aware, you know, well, I know I'm past, on my way. In the past two months, <laughs> you've spent $350,000. If we count the TPIC, <laughs> well, this exactly. is a busy season. But if we count the TPIC tour, 100% well on our way. Good job, guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, franchising was all my idea. <laughs> okay, so so I'll put some context. Hold on, hold on. It's not ready yet. No. Okay. All right, as I was saying, franchising was all <laughs> was my all idea. It was all EJ's idea. No, but to, to put some context, we were experiencing some, some challenges in the business because of our growth and because of how aggressive we were. Yeah, I'll put it this way. Uh, having... A hundred plus, near coming up on a hundred trucks all across the country, getting in accidents every day. Every day <laughs> every was growing. Day. Was growing tiresome. I, 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 I was paranoid that we were going to lose our insurance, our ability to be insured. Well, we did. We actually did lose. Yeah. In, in two years before we franchised, we lost our insurance because we had at the time we had twenty five trucks and we totaled five in that year, brand new. Yeah, uh, and they dropped us, and it tripled our insurance premiums the next year, which basically ate up the first years of profits in a lot of ways. Sure, profits. we tried. I, I was trying everything. I had live streaming cameras in the trucks. We were trying to train. What it came down to is our training was crap, uh, and our hiring wasn't where it needed to be. Yeah, it, and it, so we were having a lot of issues with that. Which literally, I, I, we were searching for. Okay, how how can we how can we fix this and get this ship steered in the right direction? One of it was through our training program. Um, the other thing, I read a book and we had joked for years, why would you ever franchise? Oh, the we, pet we were anti-franchise. We it wasn't just necessarily pet waste necessarily. We but, were anti-franchise, period. But, but we had the, the same mindset that frankly a lot of our audience and or hopefully our future audience will probably have about franchising. In fact, that's straight up that our audience has a similar mindset to what we had before we franchised about franchising and that is what is that what what am i buying whether i'm buying a lawn care whether i mean unless i'm buying a mcdonald's <laughs> what's the point in franchising and i knew all about franchising i was not novice in it i knew more about it probably than the average person i might have still been novice but i knew more about it than the average person but yeah, we didn't want to. We franchise. didn't want to we, franchise. I remember thinking, why, why would I want a bunch of whiny franchisees? I literally <laughs> remember thinking this. I don't think this now, for the record. I don't think this now. I actually think it's brilliant. I think franchising is one of the greatest possible things you can do. Uh, I should say, not you can do. One of the greatest business moves that there are in business and in branding. I, I think there's enormous opportunity and win. It's 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 a win 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 scenario. So I love franchising. But back then I thought, why would I want to be a franchisor where I'm responsible to those franchisees and where, you know, I'm having to hold. I remember, I remember thinking of a franchisee. You know what franchise I consider a failure is? You remember the, all the ice creams, the marble slabs mm -hmm. and the, and the um, what's the other one? Cold Stone. Yep. And TCBY, Basket these rub. are franchises, and I just remember, th and I, I know, I remember always thinking that those were franchise, examples of franchises where it's like, there's clearly a compliance issue. Did you take a shower? This fly's getting you. Well, no, but we are in a garage. <laughs> so, anyway, I always had a, a I, I, didn't have, I didn't think franchising was bad in every way, but I didn't see it as being our path at all. And I don't precisely remember what led me towards this book, but I was just looking for solutions. Like, okay, how can we transfer some of our liability and these problems with the trucks? Like, how can we fix these things? And continue to grow. And scale. continue to grow, because we were also needing more leadership in the company. But we were also cash-strapped. So how do you get great leaders? How do you lower our risk with these trucks, these accidents, these type, these... Um, liabilities. Rookie. Yes, our liabilities. And I don't know what led me to the book. Do you even recall? No idea. I don't know. I, I, just I, know I ordered a book called How to Franchise you, Your Business. You, and I, I mean, it's rare that I will literally read a book like in a day or two, but I was just eating it up because as I went through that book, 
I was like, well, that's an answer for that problem that we have. That's an answer for that problem that we have. And I, I called EJ up and keep in mind, we were like, we'll never franchise. I said, you got to read this book. I said, this, this is the direction. I was convinced I only had to read half of it. That's how smart yeah. I am. <laughs> and he goes, I'm ready. I mean, it was literally yeah, I never like, read the whole book. I still we, have it over there. We I never read, read the whole uh, book. Honestly, and I think within a week, we were like, okay, how, how can we do this? Yeah. This is the answer for us, for the goals that we have, the expansion that we wanted to see, and the, to, to be able to bring in talent that we wanted and that we couldn't afford at that Franchising point. is beautiful in that, again, it goes back to what I always, I very much so believe in the entrepreneurial mindset. And I always have wanted that in my businesses. So if I, if I believe in the entrepreneurial mindset and I want that in my business, what vehicle better than franchising is there? There really isn't one. There's licensing options, that's crap by and large, <laughs> uh, at least in the industries we're in. But yeah, franchising just made so much sense. Uh, it's, and, and honestly, it's been better than I would have in a lot of ways yeah. hoped or dreamt about it in, in the economies of scale of it and the way that it shifts your mindset in business. It literally, it's, it's an example to me, franchising as an industry as a whole. Franchising is an example of the idea that there's not a single pie. There's, from an economic standpoint, from in business, in economics, there's not a single pie that we're all trying to take from. And if I take more than you, then it, no. It, it, the, the entire industry of franchising is an, is an example of how capitalism creates more pies. Franchising literally does that. And yes, there is a fly there. Welcome to the garage. <laughs> uh, no, so to, to go back to, to direct to, when did we read the book on franchising or when did Josh read the book? It was somewhere between late 2017, early 2018. And I know that because it took about a year to franchise the business, about mm -hmm. a year and about a hundred grand in consultants and lawyers costs. Uh, and we started, our, we had our FDD ready, which means you're ready to franchise. That was ready in August of 2019 when we brought on our first three franchisees. That was August 2019, go back August 2018. So it's probably early 2018. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And we made it happening. We made it happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How many franchisees do you have now? We have 12. And I had to think about that because one, uh, thir we had 13, one uh, team merged. So we've got 12. How many territories? We have got nine, 92 territories franchised. Why are you looking at that? Well, yeah, but with the, you have, so you have some question in that because we're literally in the middle right now. We had 91 plus the Atlanta deal would have given us 96, but then take away where North Carolina was, mm -hmm. brings that back down to 90, but actually North Carolina is set so in reality, <coughs> we have, yes, we have yeah, over Yeah, we need to be concise. I know we do. I and mean, that's no, why this, you started. Is, this is the crazy thing, too, because when people ask me, it's I always know. a moving number. So what I, it's a constantly moving number. So yes, as far as how many franchise territories do we have, we have well over 100. I think it's 102 that are franchised. Uh, we have another, I think, one dozen, so just over 110 that are corporate, if you include our corporate-owned locations. Okay, and Mr. CEO, what... How many territories does our average franchisee, on average, revenue? No, uh, territories. Oh, if we have twelve, so I mean, that's. I know that you're asking it, me to do too much it, freaking but math. That makes but it on sound average, like they have ten. Uh, on average, 10 on yeah. average, a franchisee has seven to eight territories. Yeah, mm -hmm. on average, we have franchisees that have two territories. And that's we one have, of the reasons why this franchising franchise has worked out even better. You know, for to have. 90 franchisees with one territory is a lot more difficult in some regards than having oh, yeah. our, I, our franchisees that have five, ten territories and are running much larger scale businesses. Yes. I, have, we, I believe that large scale franchise businesses are the way to go. Having them very fractionalized where it's one and two territories, um, I think that's good. It's entry level. But I think in the grand scheme of things, whether it's Scoop Soldiers or the future of Chorby, I like big franchise, franchisees that, are want, that want big businesses. Expansion. Now, that won't be the case in every Chorby situation, but definitely is the case at Scoop Soldiers. What type of people are you looking to onboard as franchisees at Scoop Soldiers? I'm a huge believer in having an extremely diverse 
group of skill sets and passions and interests. And so what that could mean is I want people that are entrepreneurs. I also want people that have day jobs. I think there's benefit in both. I don't, that's not the natural mindset. Most people don't think that ha having a day job and having a franchise is okay. I think, it's, I think it can work. And so I, I want, fr from, that, from, from that standpoint, from that experience standpoint, day job, entrepreneurs, new, new season, or new people, people entering the business world that are young in their 20s, that are energetic and that want, you know, still have their entire life and vision ahead of them. I want people that are 60, 65, 70, that have already really had a career, that have an enormous amount of experience, but they also still have another tech, a decade or two in retirement to be able to do something and to be able to contribute to mm -hmm. something that they believe in, i.e. a business and a team. And that's one way that, frankly, the, the, previous, the, the older generation is able to pass on experiences. Mm -hmm. And so I think all of the above, all of the above. People coming out of the corporate world, people that never want to enter the corporate world. I want all of it. Yep. I concur. <laughs> <laughs> and we do have we do have a very diverse group right now. We do. In fact, shout out to you, Gramps. We'll see you next week in Tampa. Not on the boat though. It hurts his back. No, not on the boat. <laughs> <laughs>